Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. He remains faithful. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your faithfulness and your mercy enduring forever and ever and ever and your goodness that you've given us just because you're such a good God. You're a good, good God. Hallelujah. 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 And I thank you, Father God. We do not have to understand everything. All we have to do is believe that your word is truth. Hallelujah. And even at a time in history where people are pursuing wrong paths, even on purpose, Lord God, to try to steer humanity away from you. I thank you, Father God. We are going to adhere to your word. Hallelujah. Not make made up ideas and opinions, but we are going to stand on your word. Hallelujah. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. And we can establish our lives on your truth. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I just want to share a little bit about, you know, about the nation of El Salvador. If you don't know that much about it, it's not surprising. We don't know that much about it, but that's where the MS-13 gangs come from. Amen. And um, I actually found out that they actually started in L.A. And um, one of our presidents decided to ship them to El Salvador years back years back and uh it just grew and festered down there because there was so much corruption and so over time el salvador became the most violent corrupt nation in the world per capita with deaths and violence and crime that the um it was being overran by the by the cartel and by the the gangs and um, so in time, uh, a young man decided uh, this has got to stop because there was no safety for, for the civilians. And so he thought one of the biggest things is uh, they had no law enforcement. They didn't have a military. They had such a small military and law enforcement that they were overran by the criminals. So he... Um, started thinking, you know, there's just, this has got to change. So he was going to run for president. And um, they did everything to keep him from becoming president. And uh, the party that, that he was running under, um, the corrupt government, decided to get rid of that party. So then he tried to find another party to run with. Long story short, then they put him in jail. <laughs> they were trying to do everything they could to close down they were going to overtake this government and they were not going to let some guy come in there and fix it up. Hallelujah. But when God's got a plan. Anyway, at the last minute, he was able to run for office and he became the president. And he said he had a plan, an official plan and an unofficial plan. And he knew the first thing they needed to do was get rid of all the crime. And they needed, uh, in order to do that, they needed to um, put money into the law enforcement and develop their military. And um, so that's the first thing he did. And um, so he said what he did was he'd have these plans of how we got to do this. And he said he'd go before with his board and all his staff, and they'd have a meeting and they'd talk about these things. And they go, okay, now let's pray. And he said, we prayed and asked God for wisdom. And so um, the plans that they had, they just asked God for wisdom and how to do these things. And they were able to, a country with no money, and able to double their military and their law enforcement. They knew that's what had to happen first. They got um, all their equipment updated. They got, um, you know, vehicles, weapons. They got everything they needed. And then they decided to go after the the gangs and so it's funny because over months ago i would see these videos of the ms-13 sitting basically in their under underwear lined up in perfect form on these big in these big rooms these big cement floors and i'm thinking who's catching these guys and making them so submitted that they're just in their underwear with their hands tied behind their back 
sitting on the floor, lined up, just lined up. I'm like, who's doing this? And um, so they caught them, and they um, started arresting them. And they said another thing that they had was their jail system was overrun basically by the gangsters. They, they would get prostitutes coming in there, and they, had their, they were living their own life in jail. And so they said they had to clean up the jails. So in a short two years, they turned that whole thing around. Amen. But how they did it is they had a plan, and then they'd go sit, and they'd start praying over it and asking God for wisdom. And he said, how can you, how could anybody rule without having the wisdom of God? He said, that should be common knowledge. And so um, I just started thinking, man, how awesome is that? And he had much to say about how they've been turning their nation around and, um, and how the United States of America was made to be the superpower. Because one of the things is the United States sits in a very strange place in the middle of two oceans. And he said, you are too far from your enemies. Your enemies can't get at you. You're too far from them. Because Canada and Mexico are not going to attack you. And he said, you have everything. You have the smartest people, the greatest education. You have engineers. You have scientists. You have, you have everything at disposal in your nation to have the best nation. Yet the one thing we don't have Right now, I said right now, is somebody ruling in God's wisdom. Amen? But that can be subject to change. Amen? And it just made me start thinking about wisdom, and I could not shake it. Just thinking about wisdom. I laid down yesterday to take a nap, and I just couldn't, couldn't get away from wisdom and praying to God for wisdom and realizing as the children of the living God, how vitally important it is to have wisdom in our lives. Now that's as a ruler of a nation, crying out to God for wisdom. But we as individuals need to have wisdom just ruling our own personal lives. Amen? We need to have wisdom to be able to raise children and, and grandchildren. We need to have wisdom to have finances and be able to take care well of our finances. Amen. When we don't know what we're doing or how to do it, it's because we're lacking wisdom. If we're employees or employers, we need to have wisdom to run a company. We need to have wisdom, you know, to work for a company. And I, I like it because, you know, they always have, uh, especially in a bigger company, employee of the month. Amen. How much more should a, a child of God full of wisdom have a chronic problem with being the employee of the month? Amen. Subject to raises all the time. Subject to favor. That people are looking for you to bless you because of the wisdom of God. And I just thought we need to just take another look at wisdom and how important it is. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs in chapter 1. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 1. I'm going to read um, something in Psalms, in one, uh, Psalms 111.10, if you want to write it down for your notes. In the New Living Translation, it says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. Where there is no reverence and honor, and the fear of the Lord, there is no wisdom. Amen? You can't even be saved without the wisdom of God. Because fear, the fear of the things of God, the reverence for God, and this has 
do happen in the body of Christ? How do you know? How do we know that we're not operating in wisdom when God is not first, foremost and first in our lives? Amen? The things of God. And we have to be submitted to the things of God. It's the, the thing that God in the church was that Western civilization, nobody tells me what to do. I know what I'm doing. But not so if we go according to the word. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom, and all who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. We grow in wisdom by being obedient. Willing and obedient. Obedient and willing. We've got to not only do what God tells us to do, we've got to want to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 1 says right here, right in the beginning, right in the beginning of this book of Proverbs. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, and doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance, for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Our instruction must come first and foremost from the word of God. Amen? So if you go down through this book, if you look in chap um, chapter 1, verse 20, it says, out of the open, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud she raises her voice in the public square at the top of the wall. She cries out at the city gate. She makes her speech. And then in, in ver chapter 2, it says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turn your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then... You will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And then in verse 10 it says, For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. In verse 12, will, Wisdom will save you from the ways of the wicked men and from the men whose words are perverse who have left the straight path to walk in dark ways. In verse 16, wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman, with her seductive words. Amen. Seductive means they have a seducing spirit. Now this, it's saying, it, this is a, a Solomon or David talking to his son, passing on his wisdom. Amen. And how important it is. But we know that there are seducing spirits that would try to buffet any child of the living God, seducing them away from the things of God, seducing them away from God's word, seducing them away from that being still and knowing God. Amen? Seducing them from that quiet place, seducing them away, away from time with God seducing them away and, and looking at the things of the world and getting their enjoyment for the things of the world and, and seducing them away to the things of sin and not putting the kingdom of God first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in chapter 2, he says that we have to turn our ears to wisdom. The Lord gives wisdom. Wisdom will save you. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, wayward, seductive spirits. The wisdom of God, you'll see it coming. 
you're like, ooh, that is a spirit trying to seduce me away from the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding in all your ways to submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. Do not, in verse 7, 3, 7, do not be wise in your own eyes for the fear of the Lord. For fear the Lord and shun evil. There is a, such a seducing spirit that has got in the church that we have got to recognize what it is. Amen? And not to be wise in our own eyes, because we can get real wise and cocky. Well, I'm a Christian. I know the Bible. I know what the Word says. God ain't going to be mad at me. I'll just do whatever I want to do. That's not wise. It's not wise. Amen? Do not be wise in your own eyes for the fear of the Lord and fear the Lord and shun evil. That is the ego that is in the church. Amen. God is cleaning up his church. He's looking for, for those. Amen. He's willing to work with a remnant of people that are willing to sell all, sell all for the, the service of the kingdom. Amen. It says in verse 9: honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled and overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. In 13, it says, blessed are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding. For she, it refers to she as wisdom. She is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. Amen. Why? Because wisdom knows how to get gold. Amen. But gold can't gain wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare to her. Long life is in the hand. It says her. Long life is in her or wisdom's right hand. And in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. And all her paths are peace. Amen. In verse 19. By wisdom the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. Amen. In verse 21. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight preserve sound judgment and discretion. Amen? In verse 35, it says, the wise inherit honor. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. This is, this is the wisdom of God. There are two kinds of wisdom in the world, the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God which supersedes any other wisdom or knowledge or understanding that we'll ever come in contact with. Amen? In chapter 4, it says, verse 5, Get wisdom, get understanding, do not forsake, do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. In verse 7, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. <laughs> Amen? The first and foremost, the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it cost all you have, get understanding. And so we can go on and on through the book of Proverbs because this is a book to gain wisdom, right? That's what it said right in the beginning. It's a big book of wisdom. And how vitally important that, um, that we understand how important having wisdom is in the body of Christ. And as the church, the church has gotten away from one of its most fundamental things, and that is the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. It's not wise to sin. It's not wise to put the things of God second place. It's not wise to put the things of the world before the things of God. It is not wise to put the, the lust of the flesh before the yearnings of the Spirit of God. It is not wise. And we'll always pay the price for it. Amen? I want to just look at a real quick story. And this is in uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 3. And I'm going to start um, in verse 4. It's 3, 4, I'm reading out of the NIV. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place 
And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David. Because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart, you have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. But I am only a little child, and I do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people, and you have chosen a great people too num numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for, for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands, as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and he realized it had been a dream. He had asked for the wise thing, which was wisdom. Amen. The simplest of all prayers. Think about it. That was the simplest of all prayers. God, just help me because I can't do this by myself. Amen. Even if we're single on our own, we have nobody that's res that we're responsible for, or whether we are overseeing a nation. We can't do this by ourselves. You can't live your life. And who you live with and how you live, you can't do it by yourself. Hallelujah. It might seem one, one area of your life is succeeding, but others are just falling apart. But God said he would give him long life and wealth. He would give him everything because he was going to be ruling with wisdom. And we as individuals have to look over our personal lives and say we need to have wisdom when it comes to everything about our lives. Nothing like operating without wisdom and then adding more people more money, more things to your life when you're already not operating in wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at James 1. I'm so grateful to God that he tells us what we need, but then he tells us how to get it. Amen. It's, it's a pretty sad day when he tells us what we need but doesn't tell us how to get it. In James 1.5, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, I love the way that is said. If anyone lacks wisdom, now we should all say amen and amen. Because if we don't recognize how much we are lacking in the wisdom of God, we are being of utter fools. Amen? If any of you lacks wisdom, that separates those that are humble and those that are full of pride right there. Because people of pride don't think they're lacking in wisdom. 
They think they can figure it out themselves. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. You should ask God. You should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. How simple of a prayer is that? How many days do we start out with asking God for wisdom? I need wisdom in this day, God. I need wisdom in this situation. I just prayed. I've been praying, God, give me wisdom. If you put me in this position, in this church, God, I need wisdom. Amen? I need wisdom. How do, what do I want wisdom for? Obviously, I need wisdom to be able to oversee things. Hallelujah. But what am I wanting to oversee? I want to oversee people that are hungry for God. God, give me wisdom on how to stir up the hunger in people. God, give me wisdom and know what to say to stir the things up in the hearts of people to want to sell out everything in their lives to serve the living God. God, help me. Give me wisdom on what to do and what to say and what to pray to help others to serve you with everything they have. Amen. To have people in their hearts be bowed down to the living God. Just give me the, the right words, God. Amen. I'm going to read this out of the Passion Translation. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures. I love that. Every single one of our failures right now in our life or in the past are all because of one thing, and that's a lack of wisdom. If you struggle financially, it's because you have no wisdom in that area. You have to have the wisdom of God. And when we get the wisdom of God, we can't take the credit for something that we didn't have before because it was only by the wisdom of God. Not our smarts, not our education, not our ability to calculate and figure it out. It was by God's grace and mercy that he gave us his wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, ask God for wisdom and he will give it to you. Listen to this. And he won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures. Think of that. Our failures are of a lack of wisdom. And he's not going to point those out. Amen? He's not there to point them out. He's there to give you wisdom to get out. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. But he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace, ability, and power to turn it around. Amen. And when we ask, we're not going to doubt because God said it. That means it's so. We have got to, as individuals, Coming to church and hearing this on Sunday morning is not going to radically change your life, but it is the first step because it's the direction of God. We've got to make this a pattern for our, our lives from here on out that we go before the most awesome, most wise God, the God of all wisdom, and we go before him and ask for wisdom how to turn our lives around. Go to him and ask for wisdom how to turn these financial situations around. Go to him for wisdom and ask him how to turn these physical things around. Wisdom, how to, how to turn uh, people's hearts away from the things of this world and turn them to the living God. Amen. I don't want to play church. I mean... Y'all know I'm 72. I've been walking with God for 47 years. Amen. 
I've been in big churches and big ministries, some of the biggest. Amen? I've been in little churches that had so much power. If you open the doors, it would knock everybody that walked by the streets on their face. Amen? Hallelujah. I want the wisdom of God for my personal life, and I want the wisdom of God to lead in this church. And I pray for the wisdom. And that's what Paul, you would tell, tell the disciples in his letters to pray. Pray for me. Pray for him that he would have boldness, that he would have wisdom. Amen? M my prayer is that the people of this church would pray for me daily to have wisdom. I'm not saying, a lot of times when people start praying for wisdom, then all of a sudden they just start getting these ideas on how it should be done. But if you're asking God for me to have wisdom, then God's going to show me. Because <laughs> we, we're very complicated beings with our minds and our souls. And we can always think, well, it should be done this way, and why doesn't she do it that way? And if it was me, I would do this. <laughs> well, that ain't you, and that ain't the wisdom of God. <laughs> I mean, if you ever think that you could do a better job, it's not God telling you that. <laughs> Let me just say that again. If you ever think that you could do a better job at what somebody else is doing, including pastoring, it ain't God, because that ain't your job. You're supposed to have the wisdom for what God's calling you to do. Amen? You need to have wisdom of God for your position. If you're a wife, or if you're single, if you're a father, if you're a grandparent. Amen? You can only gain the wisdom for what you need. Amen? And that's a lifetime adventure, gaining wisdom over your finances. Amen? I mean, if you're a multimillionaire and God's already showed you how to do all that, glory to God. Hallelujah. God's already given you the wisdom. But if you struggle, then God wants to give you wisdom because you're not operating in his wisdom. If there's so many unanswered prayers, God wants us to have wisdom. Amen? Instead of things going on forever and ever and ever, God, I just need your wisdom. God, I need your insight. I need your knowledge. I need your revelation. Hallelujah. I need you, Lord God. I need you to do what you've called me to do. Amen? Even as a parent, you need wisdom to raise children. Amen? <laughs> because every individual is different than the next. You might have started to figure out one, and then you got the next one. You're like, I don't know what to do with this one. <laughs> God knows how to do everything. God knows how to handle everything. And we can do it by his wisdom. We've got to go to God and ask for wisdom. Amen? We need wisdom in our lives. Hallelujah. Wisdom in this church. Wisdom in our, with our families. Need, we need wisdom. Amen? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to stand up. If it's easier to sit, then go ahead and sit. But we're going to pray right now. We're going to ask God for wisdom and we're going to thank him for it. Hallelujah. Father God, we just come before you. We thank you for the simplicity of your word. That you said in James, if we lack wisdom of Father God, it's obvious that we are lacking wisdom in so many areas. Hallelujah. We ask you for wisdom. I ask you for wisdom on how to rule in this church, how to oversee in this church in order that the people's hearts would be hungry and that you would send people that would be hungry, Father God, that we all would grow up in the stature in which you have called us to, becoming mature saints, filled with the truth, hallelujah, and not dragged off by enticing seductive spirits this way or that, but that we be sold out to the cause of Christ, that we have recognized that we have one life to live for Jesus Christ our Lord. 
We thank you, Father God, that we have wisdom in our household. We have wisdom over our finances, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, we can pray and ask you for these things. But I thank you, Father, every day offers another opportunity to have your wisdom over different situations that might arise. So, Father God, we are going to live our lives continuing to take another look at wisdom. As you said to Solomon, because he asked for wisdom, that you were going to give him wisdom, but you were also going to give him long life, and you would give him wealth. So, Father God, we understand that it takes wealth to be able to handle the work that needs to be done, but it takes wisdom to handle the wealth. We thank you for the wisdom, for the wisdom, Father God, even to live this day and to do this day what must be done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We need to just take time every day and ask God for wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Say wisdom. Wisdom. Say wisdom is on my lips. Wisdom is in my heart. Wisdom is in my thoughts. Hallelujah. We need to be wise. Amen. The word of God says we need to, as the children of God, need to be wise. If you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I just want to share with you for a moment the importance of receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You might believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and the King of glory, but you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So you can just say a little prayer right while you're there. I'm going to just pray with you. Say, Father God, thank you for Jesus, and thank you for the life that he has given me. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. If you believe that in your heart and you just said that, that makes you a born-again Christian. It doesn't mean you understand everything. Hallelujah. It's a lifetime of learning of the goodness of God. Be acquainted with the Bible and all that's in it. And when somebody teaches something, go to the Bible yourself and start searching through it to see if what they're saying is true. Find a good Bible church, amen? A Holy Ghost Bible church that teaches the Bible, amen? And you are welcome here if you're in the area. If not, just begin to communicate with God and ask God what you should do, amen? He will show you which church that you need to be a part of, where you will grow and flourish, also your family will, amen?